Jumbo, fellow adventurers, welcome to another week of spiritual tune-ups. This is day two of our dive into writing to be published. Writing to be published either by an independent publisher or to be self-published, which is the route that I initially took. Ain't no shame there, baby. Okay, so tons of questions, a lot of interaction. Thank you so much. Continue to post your questions, your comments below. The higher the engagement, the farther these videos go. Thank you for sharing them with your friends. Thank you for the stars. A thumbs up, waving, warms my heart. Really does. All right, so I've got a lot of great questions and more to come all week long on you becoming the writer that's within you. Okay, first question today. Mike, why does my mind go blank? when I sit down to write. Clearly, the biggest overwhelm factor in becoming a writer is the daunting realization that, that you need to extract an entire book out of yourself. And most books are probably 50,000 words, 40,000 words, 100,000 words. By the way, books are measured by words. So don't go tell somebody how many pages your book is. I mean, is the font, you know, 20 or 25 so that you could bulk it up? I used to do that. Is it double or triple spaced with huge fonts? So it's word count. Most nonfiction books are around 40 or 50,000 words. Um, fiction books can be 10,000 words, 5,000 words, 500,000 words. There's no rule for either, but those are rules of thumb. That's just kind of an idea. So you're sitting down and you want to write the book and it is understandable that you are paralyzed with overwhelm when it comes to, to such a monumental project. Even experienced writers who dedicate their entire career to writing can take five years or 10 years to write one book. It's totally overwhelming. So here's what I highly recommend and it ties into the to some of the questions that are about to follow this morning. You don't sit down and write a book, okay, clearly. Um, you break it into a lot of little sections. Okay, we did that little exercise yesterday, title, subtitle, chapters. That's a fun little exercise, and you could spread that out over a week. But more, what I want you to realize, if you're a nonfiction writer to be, realize your goal is not so much a book. Your goal is to help other people. You know, if you meet the criteria I laid out yesterday, and this is not just about writing for your own therapy or your own sheer enjoyment. If you want to write a book, by definition, it's something that you want published and that other people are going to pick up and read. Okay. And that means you're a teacher. If you're into nonfiction, you're a teacher. And there's a lot of ways to be a teacher other than the written word. And so what I would highly recommend is that this thing that you want to teach, this thing that you have to say to the world, you start experimenting and searching for ways to share it other than the written word. And or there's various different ways within the world of written writing that you could be a teacher through articles, essays. Um, uh, you could be a teacher of self-improvement and convey your story through a story of fiction. It can be, you know, um, you know an example, Richard Bach, uh, Illusions, um, The Prophet by Khalil Gibran, many great teachers, Ayn Rand, The Fountainhead, and Atlas Shrugged, have these philosophical point of views that they want to relay to the world, and they do that through the mechanism of storytelling. Wow, talk about a double entendre. So anyway, recognize that you're a teacher and there's a lot of ways to teach in, from writing a story, fiction, nonfiction, article, essay, some kind of submission, or you're not going to like this one, speaking. One of the things you're going to find that's invaluable to you as an author, whether somebody publishes you or you're self-published, is having what these days is called a platform. And it's so easy to do a platform with the internet, okay? Compared to even 20 years ago, there was like no such thing. But 
If you have something to share and teach about the beauty of life, about the art of cooking or whatever it may be, there are people who gather, and if it's coronavirus, okay, then gather on the internet through meetup groups and the like, and they always, always, always are looking for guest speakers. If you're afraid of speaking in public, join Toastmasters. You can do that online as well. That's how I got my start as a terrified public speaker joining Toastmasters. I was a member for many, many years. And you begin practicing and developing your craft, which is teaching, which is teaching more than writing, in this alternative way through the spoken word. And then guess what? They dovetail together so beautifully. A speaker will very often have a book. Authors very often give talks. And if you can start working this angle now, to answer the original question, why does my mind go blank? Because you're trying to move a mountain and you've never even shoveled dirt before. So you can start shoveling dirt by writing a little article, a little story, a little poem, a little speech, and start giving it. And then as you work your way through the nerves, you're gonna have some confidence. You're gonna have a good time. You're gonna learn how to get the audience wrapped around your finger, and they're gonna want more. They're going to want your book. They're going to want to hire you. They're going to want you to speak at their event, their club, to their group. I I've even been hired in the beginning to speak to families. <laughs> that was so wild. Uh, you know, the, an extended family gathering of 30 people over Thanksgiving has a guest speaker, Mike Tooley. <laughs> I love those folks. I doubt they're watching now, but love you, love you. Thanks for that opportunity 20 years ago. So don't don't be just facing the mountain all alone. It's time to write a book and it's going to take five years. Nobody could write under that kind of a pressure. Dibble, dabble, play around, write, speak, exercise, join Toastmasters. At Toastmasters, you can give four or five minute speeches. And boy, do you get, I became a better writer by learning how to craft a speech. So to answer the question, to avoid your mind going blank, don't try to do it all. Break it into pieces, piece here, piece there, a piece for your website, a blog, a video blog. Do all of these different things and let it parlay into one massive symphony that is you delivering what is inside of you to deliver. Now, if you're not into self-improvement, and what I mean, if you're not into nonfiction and you want to write fiction, that does change the landscape a little bit. But still, too often the person who wants to be a writer, as I alluded yesterday, wants to do so, to hit it big, make a million dollars, and to say F you to the rest of the world. Okay, now I'm going to go do my thing, and I showed you I'm really somebody, and that's, that's a bad place to be. You look, if you really want to write fiction, um, Generally, that means there's an entertainer or a storyteller inside of you. And that storyteller is not going to be happy with one book. Now, I know one book is bad enough. Now you got to think about writing two or three. But if you are really a storyteller, and this, just, this isn't just about you know, hit and run and make a million dollars, then, then cultivate and hold hands with that little storyteller inside of yourself. You know, nurture her or him. Tell a little story. Tell a big story. Write a kid's book. Write a three-page story. Write a 10-page story. If you're a writer, if you're a storyteller, then do it. Not just all or nothing, baby, which is going to psych you out and leave you with a blank page. I've always thought it would be really cool, given the, the, the craft, the astonishing craft, and creativity involved in telling a good story that really hooks somebody in the very beginning. Oh my God. And then takes them to the cliff and shows them there's no hope. And then in a page, the sun rises and you make it home. King or queen victorious amongst the masses. That's what a, a fictional storyteller is. So can you do that in five pages? I bet you can. I bet you can. And do it again, do it again. And you're going to hone that skill. And then you're going to feel less intimidated by writing the book. And it won't be just the book. It'll be one of many works.
So this is much more psychology, if you will, uh, and getting away from the nuts and bolts of how do I write a book. It's like, look, you're more than a book. And, and there's more ways to convey a story or a, a lesson than just a book. So see the whole thing, including yourself, in your full radiant light. Uh, and then no one part becomes so overwhelming. Um, to be published by another or to be self-published? Okay, let's just say the obvious. Everyone would prefer to be published by somebody else, okay? They're gonna give you an advance, they're gonna give you cash, usually before you even finish writing the book. Um, they're gonna promote you, they're gonna publicize you, they're gonna take a chance on you. Um, they're gonna do all of the heavy lifting. Everybody wants that. Well, the, the publishing industry, if you haven't noticed, is, is on a trajectory like this right now. Okay, they're all going bankrupt. People don't buy books, now they're buying eBooks. It's a whole different world, which doesn't mean you can't do it. Uh, people are doing it. Look at Rupi Carr, the poet. Okay, she showed up from nowhere five years ago, 10 years ago, and as a college student, 21, wrote a book of poetry, amazing, amazing poetry, and has sold millions and millions and millions of copies. So you can do it. I'm not telling you you can't do it. But it's about, it's about being real and being authentic and being the full picture of either a storyteller or a teacher. Uh, and then definitely, definitely everyone watching with a book inside of you should pursue uh, finding an independent publisher. But don't hold up the train just for that to piece of the puzzle to fall in place. Continue moving forward, dabbling, experimenting, speaking, all of these things while, and writing the book, while you explore finding an agent, you explore finding an editor, you explore finding a publisher. Uh, I did that, exactly. And every single publisher, including ones I really love today, um, said, no, 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 thank you. Thank you very much, but no, no way. But at least I didn't put everything on hold for their yes, because we wouldn't be having this conversation uh, today. So by all means, pursue a publisher. How? Uh, Google it. Um, look at the writer's market. There's a lot of resources out there. How do you find an agent? I don't even know. I never even had an agent. I'll give you more of my story as the week unfolds. So yes, pursue getting a publisher through all the conventional means, including just sending them your manuscript or a book summary um, by email or or snail mail. Uh, I'm not a publisher, so please don't send me your manuscript. Uh, I, I, I don't have the time to even look at it, much less give you direction on it. But there are publishers out there and that's what they do. Google them, find out their submission procedures while simultaneously moving forward. And tomorrow we'll talk more about self-publishing. I've got a lot of other great questions on the back burner already submitted by all of you for uh, the days ahead in this week where I turn my spiritual tune-ups into how to, how to write, speak, and be published. Okay, thank you, thank you. All the best. Have an amazing Tuesday, the best of your life so far. Thanks for being with me. Winnie, Chris, Nelson, Teresa, Lisa on Facebook, Usher, Mary, Saludos, Kay, and Vic on Instagram. See you tomorrow. Oh, by the way, I'm doing a 21-day Change One Thing adventure. Go to tut.com. Join me this January. Sign up right now. It's a whacking great $19. You get a video a day, a brand new video a day, a full video a day for 21 days. This is less than a dollar a day. Okay, every single day, I'm going to walk you through every metaphysical step to become the manifester of your dream starting January 5th. Plus, I'm throwing in four one-hour workshops. This is like 10 hours of Mike Dooley, yours truly, so that you can make one thing manifest and then know the secret to making two, three, and all else come to pass. Check the link below or just go to tut.com. All right, tally ho amigos.